The painterly look is easier than ever in Blender. There's a real-time renderer for Cinema 4D artists, and interaction design gets another powerful upgrade. It's Motion Mondays, and doesn't it sometimes feel like Mondays just go on forever? Forever. Forever. The fabulous podcast from Forum's Joel Pilger just dropped an episode where Joel talks with Jared Yeeter, former managing director at The Mill, about the legendary studio's shocking closure. Along with Ryan Summers and John Lepore, they dive into what this signals for our industry's future. The podcast argues that Technicolor actually dragged the mill under rather than it failing on its own. Technicolor acquired the mill in 2015, but poor management, bad corporate decisions, and unsustainable business models doomed the company. They talk about the big question. Is motion design and VFX dying? No, but it's evolving. The old model of large-scale VFX studios with massive workforces and razor-thin margins is becoming unsustainable. Studios that survive will be leaner, more innovative, and adaptable. If you've relied on a predictable pipeline of work from agencies or brands, that pipeline is receding, something I know a lot about. Studios need to actively shape their own opportunities rather than waiting for projects to land. The episode tackles AI's role too, pointing out that the best creative professionals won't compete against AI, they'll integrate it and focus on what AI can't do, ideation, strategy, and originality. Definitely check it out. James Cowan of Yes Captain just released Crasheroids, an asteroids clone that channels his After Effects error message rage. Beyond being a fun way to waste five minutes, it's a fascinating example of vibe coding, using AI tools to create apps without actually knowing how to code. James shared some behind the scenes footage showing how quickly he built this game. While not directly tied to motion design, this opens up possibilities for artists with ideas for tools or projects that would leverage their skills but would normally require coding knowledge, which is an entirely different career path. These AI coding tools have gotten so good, you can literally describe what you want and watch as the tool builds your app in seconds. AI coding has completely changed how School of Motion handles building internal tools, and more artists are using these tools to build things fast, even without technical skills. James was initially going to name it Hemorrhoids, which is clever, but I'm not sure what he has against After Effects. (laughs) Anyway, check it out and see if you can beat my high score. The game is really fun, but your colon will thank you for the name change. Time for a quick School of Motion news dump. Our spring registration is on for classes starting April 7th. If you're looking to dive into Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, or Cinema 4D, or to upgrade your design or animation skills, there's never been a better time to jump into our interactive sessions. You get amazing training, unlimited critique, access to our 24-7 community, exclusive invites to live online events, and more. This session is filling up fast, so register now. Also, our annual NAB MoGraph Meetup is happening April 6th in Las Vegas at Tom's Watch Bar. Tickets are free at MoGraphMeetup.com, and beers are on us and our awesome co-sponsors, including our co-host, Rive. Come hang with motion designers, nerd out, and maybe meet some of the designers you follow online. It's my favorite event of the year, and I really hope to see you there. I discovered D5 Render last week, a real-time path tracing renderer that works via live sync with 3D apps like Cinema 4D and Blender. I recently spoke in Portland about how real-time 3D changes what's possible for artists, and this tool makes it easier to join the real-time revolution with tools you already know. D5 is a standalone app that runs alongside your 3D program. The live sync gives you real-time previews, then triggers renders way faster than traditional GPU renderers. Many examples show architectural previs, which is an obvious niche for this tool, but what could motion designers do with this tech? The render quality looks amazing, on par with Unreal Engine. For C4D users especially, since it doesn't ship with a real-time renderer the way Blender does, this might be perfect for exploring real-time 3D. D5 adapts PBR materials into D5 materials in one click and synchronizes native C4D materials plus those from Octane, Corona, and Redshift. If you've tried it, let us know. Photoshop Beta just dropped an improved hue and saturation tool that makes selecting and tweaking color ranges much easier. This tool has been around for decades, so maybe this is its midlife crisis. Piximperfect shows why this is more powerful than the old version. The tool scans your image for primary colors, and when you select any, it dials in a hue and saturation selection very accurately. If you've tried changing clothing colors or backgrounds before, you know that getting range settings right took a lot of trial and error, and now it's one click. There are lots of other quality of life upgrades too. Piximperfect's channel is amazing for Photoshop techniques. He is an absolute wizard and shows how much time this new version saves. Download the Photoshop beta from your Creative Cloud app to try it yourself. Los Angeles startup Moon Valley launched an AI video model trained on openly licensed, not copyrighted data. It joins Adobe Firefly as one of the only ethically trained AI models. Training this way makes it harder to match results from Sora and VO2, but their demo shows impressive consistency and natural movement, things that usually give away AI-generated footage. These cherry-picked examples look good, but the overall quality doesn't yet match VO2. 
Still, it's refreshing to see companies creating tools that don't make you feel like you need to take a shower afterwards. These tools still take time to generate video and offer few controls for tweaking results. And for motion designers, use cases remain kind of limited, but for video editors hunting for that one missing shot, they're becoming genuinely useful. Check out Moon Valley in the description and let us know what you think in the comments. Time to feature industry greatness. Motion Force worked with NBC Sports on the Paris Olympics last year using Unreal Engine to create a digital Paris for dynamic camera moves and graphics. Based in New York and Connecticut, Motion Force excels in sports broadcasting. These projects are possible with traditional rendering, but Unreal's detail and speed make them feasible for smaller studios, a huge opportunity for motion designers on the cutting edge. Next up, the future-proof 2025 main titles from the Ringling College of Art and Design, my old stomping grounds. Headed up by students Rin Yokoi and Diane Lee, this opener is indistinguishable from a six-figure studio production. It features stunning 3D work, typography, and brilliant integration of 2D type into 3D scenes. It's really hard to believe that this is student work, so outstanding job, guys. And finally, check out Original Source's shower gel ad mixing traditional production with CG and AI. While the AI shots have that weird AI vibe, it's one of the better examples I've seen of studios using AI to create something that would have required mountains of CG work. The pacing, camera moves, and transitions between AI and real footage look great. One of the first AI-heavy spots that didn't make me seasick. The spot was created by Fold7 and Private Island, who are known for their delightfully weird work. So make sure you check out their site, it is awesome. All this work is linked in the description so you can dive deeper and tag us at School of Motion on social media if you spot any cool work that you think deserves a feature. Mikey Borup, an OG tutorial guy and tool developer, dropped a tutorial where he channels his inner Andrew Kramer to make footage look like it's built from Legos and After Effects. I love these tutorials because even if you never need Lego looking footage, the techniques show how to get creative with After Effects' built-in tools. His result is great and he shows how to control block size and other parameters too. There are cool techniques throughout this tutorial, so check it out and follow Mikey. He's been teaching this stuff for years and he owns chickens. Not sure how that's relevant. But the link's in the description. Shout out to my man, Mikey B. Live Paint Filter 3.0 for Blender just dropped, letting you turn renders into paintings in real time. It's just 10 bucks or 40 bucks for commercial use, cheaper than actual paint supplies and way less messy. New features include controlling stroke bump strength for that 3D painterly feel, rendering strokes on transparent backgrounds for compositing, and rendering baked painting versions with separate layers like base color and normal maps. Simon Lee's YouTube walkthrough shows surprisingly detailed and realistic results. It's perfect for non-photorealistic looks. Check it out and let us know what you think. This could be your ticket to digital Van Gogh status without, you know, the whole situation. Meet our School of Motion student of the week, Anna Salamagna. This Tokyo-based artist is going through expression session, tackling the Absolute Heroes assignment, which is about building advanced After Effects toolkits with expressions driving responsive design settings. There's serious code under the hood, and Anna nailed all the requirements with help from teaching assistant Shay Lord. Check out her website for even more vibrant animation work. Our community's international flavor is, in my opinion, one of the best aspects, with artists worldwide improving together. Really great job, Anna. This exercise is very hard, but you nailed it. So we can't wait to see what you do next in Expression Session. With the Game Developers Conference running through the 21st, the Rive team is showcasing their game development tools with a Rive for Game Dev Reel featuring slick game UI examples. Game UI tooling has been clunky until now, and Rive solves a massive problem in that industry. Motion designers are perfectly positioned to capitalize on this opportunity since designing in Rive is easy if you know After Effects with just a few new concepts to learn for creating interactive menus or heads-up displays. You can even map Rive files onto 3D geometry in both Unity and Unreal, opening up possibilities and simplifying implementation. The gaming world is clearly hyped based on these YouTube comments. Rive also added text follow path to their early access program, doing exactly what it sounds like, but in real time and very easily. Paying customers can join early access for beta features like this one and the very powerful data binding. Rive keeps shipping features faster than almost any other company. Seriously, it's insane. And if you're Rive curious, we are recording Rive Academy Volume 2 right now with Volume 1 already available at School Motion. Rive is opening up new industries for motion designers. Have you tried it yet? Let us know in the comments. Quick Depth for After Effects just updated, giving you instant AI-powered depth maps in version 3. The new version is twice as fast with better quality than version 2. Get it at aescripts.com to generate high quality depth maps for any footage. Version 1 users upgrade for 40 bucks while version 2 users get it for free. That's very nice of them. The demo showed detailed depth maps for creating artificial depth of field, fog, and quick comps. Almost keying quality when they're good enough. Results are cleaner than in previous versions, perfect for realistic rack focus effects and creating 3D camera moves from single photos. The plugin renders locally on your CPU or GPU with a free trial available. Check out Quick Depth 3, it's adding a new dimension to your compositing toolkit. That's a terrible line, I'm sorry. 
Spline has added mouse events like hover and clicks to their real-time 3D tool, letting you create interactive 3D scenes triggered by user input. As motion and interaction design blur together, these tools will appear more in apps and websites, with motion designers perfectly positioned to capitalize. Spline's render quality is impressive for a web-based engine. With hover events and clicks, your interactions can get sophisticated once you learn the tool. It's much easier than Blender or C4D for this purpose, making it great for portfolio sites or client interactive work. Their YouTube tutorial walks through creating these interactions, showing how clicks can trigger camera moves and animations for interactive 3D scenes that play in real time on any website. Very, very cool tech, and it's great to see Spline continue to ship improvements. Wonder Dynamics, now Autodesk owned, has transformed the magical Wonder Studio tools into Wonder Tools, AI models in Autodesk Flow Studio that simplify compositing tasks. You can now use Camera Track and Clean Plate standalone. Previously, you needed to run the entire Flow Studio process, burning up time and credits, but now you can just get a Camera Track complete with a point cloud using Flow Studio's technology. Their one-click clean plate solution works decently. Not perfect, but often good enough. Think After Effects Content Aware Fill, but a bit more automated. Flow Studio's rotoscoping lets you select removal subjects with one click, creating mats throughout the entire shot, making it faster to get decent clean plates. AI is creating very useful VFX and compositing tools, and Wonder Tools looks like a worthy addition. If you've tried them, drop your thoughts in the comments. We're wondering what you think. And that wraps up another packed episode of Motion Mondays. Don't forget, spring registration is open now for our April 7th classes, so jump in fast before they fill up. And if you're heading to NAB, make sure to join us at the MoGraph meetup on April 6th at Tom's Watch Bar. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any news, interviews, or tutorials on the channel. All the links to everything we talked about are in the description below, and EJ will be filling in next week, so make sure to spam the comments with, did you know Blender is free? Because he loves it when people tell him that.